All right, you guys, how's it going? Um, we are going to just finish the two examples from the notes over law of cosines today. And then I'm also going to go through an info sheet that I passed out to you yesterday in class um, that you're going to fill in that's going to help you have all the stuff organized for the law of sines and law of cosines. What do I do first? Then what do I do? How do I set up the proportions? Which angle do I find first? That's going to go, I'm going to breeze through all of that also. So to get you really ready to review tomorrow for the quiz, which is on Friday. Um, so that is what's going to happen here. I've already drawn the triangle for this first example. Just remember to be really careful that angle A is across from side A, angle B is across from side B, and etc. And this is an SAS triangle. So I've been telling you all chapter long that it's really important to be able to identify what kind of triangle we have. And that's going to be really evident when I go over the info sheet that I passed out to you yesterday. Um, this one is side angle side with the angle in between the two s's that's called included between the two s's and that's why the a is in between the two s's over here okay so what i'm going to do here for side angle side we use law of cosines and so i'm going to start by using my formula the angle that i have is angle a and so that means that my formula is going to start with a squared okay so based on what angle you're given this is angle a that means i'm going to start my formula with a squared so it's going to be that a squared equals b squared plus c squared. Remember, it starts out like Pythagorean theorem, minus 2bc. You still use these two letters here, and then cosine a. So I'm going to start by just plugging in all the information that I know. And yeah, it's a little bit annoying because there's some decimals here, but I don't know what a squared is, but the b is 12.9, um, the c is 15.4, don't forget to square those. And then cosine of A is cosine of 42.3. So you can type all of that into your calculator at once and then just make sure you square root your answer at the end because technically this is A squared. So you're going to have to square root all of it after you type it into your calculator and you get A equals 10.47. So that's the first thing that we needed to find was the side length. That tells us this side right here is 10.47. And so one thing that's really important about law of cosines is that now the question is like, what do I do now? Which one should I solve for now? What do I do after I have this 10.47, which goes here? And with the law of cosines, the order in which you solve for the stuff is really important. So what we're going to need to do now, I'm going to make a note over here find the smaller angle next. So the first thing we did is we used law of sines, or law of cosines, I mean, to find the missing side. That is the first thing we're gonna do, and we're gonna write all of this down in a second so you have like step-by-step -step instructions. But when I'm doing an SAS triangle, the way that I remember it is smaller angle second. So after you find the first side, that's the first thing you do. The next thing has to be the smaller angle. So you can look at the side length. Remember that this is our longest side of the triangle and that means that angle C is the biggest. Um, this is the smallest side and this is the smallest angle, but 12.9 is the like medium, the middle, and that means that angle B is smaller than angle C, which means I need to find angle B next. You need to find the smaller angle of the two next. And I'm going to do that by doing law of sine. So I'm going to find angle B now. So I'm going to do B over sine B equals A over sine A. And that proportion is going to look like this. 12.9, that's B. I don't know what angle B is, that's what I'm solving for, so I'm going to put sine B. And yeah, remember that means you're going to have to inverse sign your decimal in your calculator after you type this. Hopefully you have your calculator out and you're kind of following along here and making sure that you're typing these okay. Um, hardest part of this chapter is typing all of this stuff. Anyway, so we cross multiply, you do sine 42.3 times 12.9, you end up dividing by 10.47 and that equals sine of B. So you need to inverse sine all of that stuff and that's going to give you angle B, which is 56.02. So that's another thing that I just found. So that is angle B. 
and that is the smaller of the two angles that I had left. Angle C was the biggest one because it's across from the biggest side, so I had to find angle B first. That is very important about law of cosines, and we'll write that down again in just a second. Um, so now do I have to like check the supplement or something like to see if there's more than one triangle? The answer is no, you guys. This is an SAS triangle. You only have to check for more than one triangle if it's an ass triangle. So remember that. That's the good news. Yeah, this formula is kind of long looking, but it's an SAS triangle, which means it's not an ass triangle, which means there's always only one possibility here. Okay, so don't worry about that. The last thing we need to do, what I found now is B is 56.02, that goes here. Now I have almost all the missing information. The only thing I'm missing is angle C and that's really easy to find. You just do 180 minus the given angle minus angle B. Okay, so the last thing that we have is we're just gonna find angle C. I'm gonna zoom in here, sorry I'm zooming in and out. I'm doing 180 minus 42.3 minus 56.02 and that means that angle C is a whopping 81.68. Do I have to do a supplement or anything like that? No, this is not an ass triangle. We are finished, okay? So um, let's go into example three and see what we've got. So I wrote some stuff after drawing the picture here. Remember that angle A, I put side A across from that. That's super important. I've said it a million times. This is an SSS triangle. This is our first SSS triangle. And the order matters in which you solve for the stuff. So we're going to use law of cosines for SSS. The reason for that is um, if we were to try and set up law of sines, see how you don't know any of the angle measures? You would have way too many unknowns. You can't cross multiply and solve when you don't know any of the angles for law of sines. Therefore, we're going to use this new law of cosines formula for an SSS triangle. Um, and it does matter which one you find first. You have to find the largest angle first. So for SSS triangles, the starting point is the largest angle. So which is our largest side here? It's this one. That means that I need to find angle C first, which means I need to use the formula that starts with C squared. All right, so I'm going to write C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. So I'm using the C squared formula because C is the largest side and I have to find the first ang or the largest angle first. Um, I'm going to plug in all the numbers and crunch and you can go ahead and pause the video and do the same and then I'll talk about what to do after that. So I ended up with angle C here. Um, there's a couple really important algebraic things. Again, you guys need to be really strong in your algebra skills here. How do you solve for this variable by itself? So the first thing that you're probably going to want to do is subtract both of these things over. Keep in mind we have three terms here. This is the first term plus, this is the second term, minus, this is the third term, all of it. So how do we get just this part by itself? First thing you should do is subtract these over to this side. After you do that, you end up with negative 2 times this times this times this. So you need to divide by this multiplier right here. So divide that over so that you end up with cosine of C equals negative 0.341. Again, if you need to show more steps than this, that's fine. Um, but after you do a little bit of practice, it's going to be time saving if you can just kind of visualize it and not have to write everything out. But you need to subtract over 9.47 squared. You need to subtract over 15.9 squared. And then you need to divide by whatever negative 2 times 9.47 times 15.49 is. And that gives you cosine of C equals this. And then remember you inverse cos that in order to get our angle of 109.94. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of zoom out and I'm going to plug that in for angle C, 109.94. And so now what I'm going to do is do law of sines in order to find one of these two angles. It doesn't matter which one you find next, okay? I'm going to start with, let's see, maybe I'll start with B first. So I'm going to do 21.1 over sine of this equals 15.9 over sine of B and solve for B. So I'm just using law of sines now. So I'm going to do 21.1 over sine 109.94. This is law of sines, obviously, so we're using sine, not cos. Um, and then my side B was 15.9 over sine B. So again, we're going to cross multiply here. 
divide by this, and then inverse sine your answer to end up with angle B, which is 45.1. I'm going to plug that into my triangle here, 45.1. And then the last thing I need to do, I have all three sides in the given. I now have two out of the three angles. You just need to subtract from 180 to find that one. So to find angle A, I'm going to do 180 minus 45.1 minus 109.94. And that gives me angle A is 24.96 degrees. So now I have all three angles, all three sides. I'm finished. Okay, so I know that was kind of a lot. The law of cosines is a long formula, and algebraically, you guys need to be really careful when you're solving for your variables. But what I have here, if you want to take out that sheet that I passed out to you yesterday, I have the law of sines and law of cosines summary. This looks like a lot of stuff, but you guys can pause the video. I'm just going to breeze through this really quick. First of all, I just wrote the formulas up here that we know. Um, and these are for law of sines. Remember that you can flip all of these ratios and you just need two of them to be able to cross multiply any two of them and you'll end up with the answer. Law of cosines, there's three formulas. It's just rearranging the letters. Um, and then remember the SAS area formula that we did in the very first day of the chapter. You can kind of flip back, but there are a couple area formulas that we know. This one I talked about in the video you had for homework last night. That's the semi-parameter that you have to find. That means add up all the sides, divide by two. And then whatever that S number is goes into this formula, and you can find the area a lot quicker um, than doing anything else. This is the SAS area formula, which is really... Um, Simple and easy to use also, just depending on what you're given. If you have SAS, use this. If you have SSS, use this. Okay, but remember how important it is to know all the triangles. So I have all of those options listed here, and you can draw a picture to help you remember like which ones to use when and stuff. Um, but what I have here is all of the options of types of information we can give you for the triangles, and then what formulas you're supposed to use based on what you have. Um, so remember AAS and ASA, those were the very first two things that we did, and we did law of sines. And that means that you're given two angles and a side. And so the first thing you can do, remember what happens when you already know two of the angles. You just find the third one really quickly by subtracting from 180. So that's pretty simple. And then all you do is use law of sines to find the other two sides. doesn't matter which one you find first. There's nothing special there. That was just our very first lesson of stuff that we did. Um, for the ass triangles, that's what we've been practicing for the last two days. Remember, those are the ones where you might have no triangle, two triangles, or one triangle. So here's how you do that. First of all, you find um, the angle using law of sines. And so you're starting with this angle and this side in your proportion. And so then to do the, your second ratio, you're going to use this side with this angle. Um, and then if you get an error, remember that doesn't mean you did anything wrong. That just means there's no possible triangle. Two of the sides are too small to fit together. Um, if you get an answer when you do law of signs, then you have to check the supplement. And if the supplement actually works in the triangle, meaning that you can make a second triangle with those angle measures and it's not too big, that means you have two triangles possible. And that unfortunately means there's a lot more work and a lot more number crunching you need to do. Those are the hard ones. That's like the special case. Those are worth like 20 points on the test and the quiz just because there's so much to do. Um, sometimes when you check the supplement, it's too big to actually make another triangle. It makes it something bigger than 180 degrees. That means that you don't use the supplement at all. That means there's only one triangle. And so after you find whether there's a triangle or more than one or whatever, that means next find the next angle by subtracting from 180 because you have the one you were given and the one that you found in your calculator. So you can find the last one by subtracting from 180. And then you just use law of signs to find whatever your missing side is. If it's an SSS triangle, like the example that we just finished, you have to find the largest angle first using law of cosines. Um, after that, find another angle, doesn't matter which one, using law of sines, and then just subtract the angles from 180 to figure out the third angle. If it's an SAS triangle, which looks like this, again, you're going to use law of cosines, but you start by finding the third side using law of cosines, so you need to find this side here. Um, and then you have two angles that you need to find after that. You must find the smaller one next. So SAS to me reminds me of smaller angle second is what I like to think about. So the step two is for SAS is the smaller angle. 
Um, and then after that, just again, subtract your angles from 180 for the third angle. I know this kind of seems like a lot, but you can kind of have this out on your sheet while you're looking at all your different triangles and stuff. First of all, determine what kind of a triangle it is. That's going to tell you which formula to start with. And there's just a couple things. The ass triangles, sometimes you have no triangles, sometimes you have two, sometimes you have one. We've been working on that for a couple days. You should be getting a little bit more comfortable with that. But then law of cosines, the only thing about those two is that if it's SSS, you must start by finding the largest angle. That's the rule. Um, and then find whatever else you want after that. For SAS, the only thing that you can start with is finding that third side, but what you do next is important. So there's just a couple like asterisks or fine print or like small rules that you need to just be aware of. And this is actually a good thing because it gives you more direction in order to make sure that you are doing these calculations appropriately. The last thing that we haven't really talked too much about in class, but I did mention in the video yesterday, just remember that AAA, you can zoom in and out on this triangle and stretch the sides and make them smaller. Therefore, there's an infinite number of triangles possible for AAA, and that's pretty much all we talk about regarding AAA, but you just have to check to make sure the angles sum to 180. As long as those three angles add up to 180, there's an infinite number of triangles because you can stretch and shrink and keep the angles the same. However, sometimes if those angles don't add up to 180, that's the only time where you don't have a triangle that's possible. So for the AAA case, you guys just check the angles really quick. Um, you might see that in some sort of true false question or multiple choice on a quiz or test or something. Check for AAA to make sure the angles add up to 180. If they do, there's an infinite number of triangles. If they don't, there's no triangle because it doesn't make sense if they don't add up to 180. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. And again, pause the video, rewind if you need to so that you can copy everything down here. But this is your like instruction sheet for how to use the formulas, what to do first, what to do next, um, which triangle goes with which formula, here it is. So we will talk much more about this in class tomorrow and review together to get you ready for the quiz the next day, okay? Have a great day. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow.